Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and I know some of you are probably disappointed you're seeing me after our last video we did where I said you weren't going to see me so much anymore. Well, you should have checked your calendar. That was April Fool's Day, and obviously you're going to see just as much of me as you always have, although do go back and watch that because there is some legit changes we're making that we talk about in there in the involvement with uh, having Caleb, who's absent today because he's feeling a little under the weather. I got to tell you guys, man, I am the oldest guy involved here. I got Kurt by, I don't know what, three or four years, Kurt? You're 40, aren't you? And I'm 41. 40. Oh, two years. I got Kurt by a little over two years. And I got Caleb by over a fucking like a baker's dozen. And yet I'm the healthiest son of a bitch walking around. I never get sick. I'm always feeling good for the most part. So I don't know what these guys do. Uh, I mean, Kurt's got kids. So kids always make you sick. They come up with snotty noses and getting into shit. So I get that. And then, uh, but Caleb, man, that dude, I got to give him, I would donate my immune system to him if I could a little bit, help him out a bit. So he's feeling a little bit of the weather, so he's not going to make it for filming today. So you just got my smiling face, but you will be seeing more of him. Um, so we're going to talk about today. We're going to take a little bit of a trip back in the Wayback Machine, which was kind of done on purpose. If we remember, we did a series of videos, maybe Kurt will even do some links in here, I don't know, that covered different types of snakes that may unseat the ball python. Right, what we think could unseat the ball python. We did uh, actually five different ones. One of them was kind of a joke, and four of them were legit. I'll kind of explain in a minute. And, you know, none of them are going to unseat the ball python. Let's just start there right from the get-go. Uh, when we started doing those videos, we didn't think anything was going to unseat the ball python as it stands. We kind of thought about doing some more, but we just kind of, just kind of getting too long. We kind of got away from it. Uh, However, each one of these animals are animals that we believe in that have a market share. They may take some market share even from the ball python in certain circles, which is good and great. And they're all things that I think if you wanted to expand your breeding projects beyond just ball pythons, any one of these would be a good selection. As a matter of fact, we have bred every single one of these except for one. So uh, these are all good things that you can get into, but we wanted to see which one was really the most popular idea. And the best way to do it isn't my opinion, or Caleb's opinion, or Kurt's opinion, but we took it and we let all of these videos set, then we picked one so we could, we could look at 35 days of data. Okay, 35 days of data, these videos have all been up there. We wanted to know, so out of these videos, and again, this is not scientific, so if your favorite snake loses, don't come into the comments talking about i don't fucking care nobody cares okay this is just kind of for fun and it's obviously a, a window into our audience it's not the entire reptile community but out of what we saw was there a big discrepancy in views uh, was there a big discrepancy in watch time was there which one drove more subscribers additionals things like that to the channel uh, so obviously the logarithm can have some things to do with that the thumbnail there's a lot of things that could play in there but i thought it'd be kind of interesting to know out of all of those which ones were driving the ship. So let's talk about it. Number one, the, the top video, and they're not going to be in any, I don't want to say they're not in an order. They are in an actual order. We, we first listed by the number of views. So number one got the most views. That was not my favorite snake, okay? Not my favorite snake, uh, but it is the favorite of some people in here. And that one was a blood python. So blood pythons got... And it was significant, guys. When you're talking about that, that short window of time, that month, the blood pythons, uh, they didn't quite double number two, but wasn't far away from it. So you're talking a significant uh, number of views more for blood pythons than the second video. So th that one kind of really did shock me, to be blunt. I thought they'd all be kind of close, you know, and the order, I mean, there's a few I thought would be at the top. But there's a few shocks. Blood pythons being that far and away above everybody else on views was a shock. And um, it also beat everybody by hours. So blood pythons had 363 hours. So by every metric, blood pythons came in first. Now let's put a caveat on that. If you have the most views, it would stand to reason you would have the most watch hours, right? And that holds true most of the time, but not all the way through here, which is kind of interesting. It also drove the most subscribers to the channel with nine additional subscribers. That is uh, significantly more than anything else. So, Blood Pythons, top dog overall from our audience. What I kind of gather is they would like to see more short tails, more bloods, more things like that. All the people who tend to like us tend to be more into that than they do the other things. Why is that? Well, let's, let's kind of review that Blood Python, right? Its length isn't really much different than a ball python. 
We're not talking vastly different size than a ball python in length. Uh, we are talking thicker, bigger. I mean, they're a bigger, stronger snake. Um, so there's there's that. You know, so you know, just I think that there's some similarities that they share there that kind of drive that. The number two most viewed was the hog. No, it was a carpet python. Everybody thought it'd be the hog nose. It was a carpet python, and it was a decent amount more. You know, uh, not nearly as big of a gap as it was from blood. The gap from bloods to carpets is much bigger than the gap from carpets to number three. But carpets came in number two. They also drove uh, 200 and, I'll get that later, 233 watch hours to the channel. So again, over 130 less than the bloods, right? But 233 was also second place in all the statistics for watch hours. They were also second in subscribers, which Again, stands to reason, right? And it drove six subscribers to the channel. So why is carpet pythons coming in number two? Well, I think for us, you know, does this mean carpet pythons are definitely better than corns and um, hogs, which obviously we haven't talked about yet? Probably not. What it really means is we have some carpet python fans on our channel. Why? We started with a carpet python, right? Our first snake that we ever showed, I do believe, not our first, it was like our second, the first one I got uh, when I started getting snakes again was a carpet python that we still have. It was our big jungle jag male. You know, he wasn't so big when we got him, right? So that was, I think, part of the driving force behind that. You know, um, hognose came in number three. Now, could hognose have done better if we actually showed hognose more often? Probably. We don't own any hognose, and there's some significant reason why we don't. We actually can. Uh, now, there were some things that actually prevented us from doing that before, but we don't have to abide by those rules anymore. So, uh, hognose came in number three, and it was, you know, the gap between carpets and hognose is larger than the gaps between hognose and number four. But the gap from two to five is not massive, but it, it's, it's a significant, but not massive. Watch hours, hognose only had 184 watch hours. That is actually lower than number four. So here, it seems like people who watched our hognose video, they didn't stay on it as long, right? Why? Don't don't really know, but they didn't stay on it as long. However, we don't talk about hognose very often, so I think we got some new people in there. It did drive four subscribers to the channel, which when you consider the lower number of views and watch time, that four is pretty decent. I'll take that. So that was kind of cool. Uh, so I like that. Hognose is pretty, pretty good. I guess there's, yeah, Two of these we haven't bred. I lie when I said there's only one. Hognose is one of the ones that we've never bred. Never bred hognose here. We have bred bloods. We have bred carpets. Number four was actually the one that was a joke, which I was shocked it was this high. I figured it would be dead last for obvious reasons, and that was rattlesnakes. You know, I threw rattlesnakes in there just because I like rattlesnakes, and it was kind of the idea was we're going to do the video in the same exact style. We do all of these videos. So we're not really going to pick a favorite like, oh, this is what we want. You know, nothing's going to unseat the ball pie. I mean, you still just, they're just so fucking prevalent, man. So it's going to take a lot to unseat that. So, but <laughs> rattlesnakes came in just barely behind hognose and views. You're talking about a hundred views. So super, super tight. Uh, three to four was the closest in views is closer than four to five is super tight there. Uh, rattlesnakes were right on hognose's heels. They actually eclipsed the watch time by a significant margin, having 203 hours to 184 hours. So that's, you know, it's pretty significant. If you think about it, they, however, greatly lost a hog nose in the subscriber area. And this is a pretty fair comparison, right? Because we almost have the same views, guys. And we had four new subscribers from the hog nose, one new from the rattlesnakes. The rattlesnakes drove the least amount of new subscribers to the channel. So, um... What is the cause of that? Well, one, rattlesnakes are going to be a shitty replacement for ball pythons. I can just, I promise you across the board, horribly bad idea to replace your ball pythons with rattlesnakes as a business idea. It's fun in hell, okay? I love, it's my favorite thing to breed. There is no animal in here that I've enjoyed breeding more than my rattlesnakes. I mean, just full stop, right? Uh, love it. But um, it's just, it's, they're hard to sell. There's not a big market for it. Not every show. I mean, maybe if I lived right by a place that had several hot shows a year, I'd feel differently. I don't. So it's just not going to be an easy market to move those through. Where all the rest of them, man, I could go to a, a, any number of shows and take any other four of those shows and sell them. So uh, rattlesnakes are a terrible replacement, but did come in 
number four for views, uh, number three for watch hours, and number five for subscribers. Last, this really surprised me being last, okay, was corn snakes. And I thought corn snakes would be higher up the food chain. You know, um, I, I think this is more caused by our channel than it is by the corn snake itself, right? I think it's just more our personal audience. And since we don't really ever talk much about corns, and every time we have talked about corns, you know, it hasn't really been a very successful video for us. I recall showing the video one time with one of the coolest corns, hands fucking down. Uh, it was one of the first ones ever produced uh, with one of the first two, and I think we actually showed both of them. They were about the same facility. It was one of those things that was thought to be impossible to do. It got proven it wasn't. Uh, we were with the breeder who did it. Uh, and, I mean, I'm just thinking, man, this is going to go gangbusters, right? Because this is this really cool. I can't remember what the snake was now because I'm not great on my corn morphs. I know it was a scaleless version of a couple other genes. That was when scaleless ball pythons were hot, so I think it was got tagged the scaleless would do pretty good. So, I, you know... And it just didn't. It just didn't take off for us like I thought it would. Uh, really cool snake, so. It also had the least amount of watch hours. You know, number four in watch hours was Hoggies was 184. Corn's at 162. Uh, and you're talking about a 300 view difference. So it's probably pretty close in the number of, you know, time per view as Hognose. You know, and, and part of that too, those Hognose and those Corns could simply come down to when I'm showing, talking about blood pythons, we're showing blood pythons. When I'm talking about carpet pythons, we're showing carpet pythons. I'm talking about hognose. I don't have any hognose to show. I don't have any corn snakes to show. I just never kept them. They've never really piqued my interest for keeping. I did drive two subscribers to the channel, so it bested rattlesnakes and subscribers. It did not best hognose and subscribers. So I think the rankings off of views is a pretty fair way to rank it. Again, from what our channel does. I know there's going to be people who want to defend every kind of snake. We had we had some very passionate hognose people on there, which is great. Be passionate. You know, I think hognose is going to be the, you know, they're going to, some people are like, oh, it's going to take over for ball pythons. But in the very next sentence, they'd say, well, it's not going to take over for ball pythons. That's what we're saying. But could you take something like hognose and breed it and breed just it and be successful? Yeah, I think you can. I absolutely think you can. I think there's a good market for that. Is that what I'm going to do? No. Why? I don't want to. But if you wanted to do that, you could do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Could you also take something like hognose and breed it as just a, a side part to your ball pythons? Mm -hmm. Absolutely you could. You could do any of that stuff. So it's all there for the taking. About the only one on this list I wouldn't say you could do that with is the rattlesnakes. You know, um, and because... You just, yeah, most people aren't equipped for that. Because, you know, and it's not saying that I'm better than you. That's not the point of that. What I mean by most people aren't equipped is you got to check your local laws. It's more equipment. It's more space. It's more time consuming. you got to decide if you really want to fuck with it. And then, two, uh, you know, even with us wanting to do that, well, one of the three of us really wanting to do that, we're not dedicating, hey, we're going to make this many, you know, like we would if we wanted to get into, like, corns heavy or hogs heavy or anything else, you know. Um, Kurt, if you had to rank those of what ones you think would be best to breed as a side hustle, what order would you go in? Obviously, rattlesnake number five, right? It's last. Yeah. So what's Kurt's list? Blood pythons, carpet pythons, hog nose, or corn for number one? Blood. Kurt said bloods would be his number one. Okay, number two for you, Kurt. Uh, from a profitability standpoint, you think? So corn. Corn. Or no, carpet. Carpet. Okay, number three for you. Corn. Would be the corn. Number four for you then would have to be the hoggies. Right? And that rattlesnake a distant number five. Call number 37. Uh, so why 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 is hognose at the bottom for you? I'm curious about that one. That one did shock me a bit. Because it is considered a venomous snake and it's So because of the statute issues in some places. Yeah, and yeah. I've been okay. to, I've been to quite a few shows and at the shows, I've seen way less hognose than I've seen all the other snakes. That is some truth to that. You know, and the venomous thing, again, they're not dangerous. Nobody's going to die from a hognose bite. But I know some of the, a lot of the municipal ordinances that are all boilerplated, right? Most places just buy their city codes from the place and just <laughs> shit them in there. They say rear fanged venomous in there, which hognose falls in the category, which causes some problems in some places. Um, 
for me, I would say the number one, if I was looking at it as a purely, I'm going to try to breed this to a profitability standpoint, you know, not thinking about what I like. This has nothing to do with what I like, okay? I actually would probably say corns would be number one. My reason for that is decent sized clutches, right? So good production on them. I do believe you can double clutch those so you can get two sets a year. So you can have high production on those with a whole lot of morphs. That's, so I think that would probably be your best bet. Um, number two off of that, man, it's really tight. This is a really kind of a toss up, you know, I'd probably say, if I'm going by today, if I'm going by today, like this moment in time right now, I would say bloods. Okay, if I'm going by where I think we're going to be in two or three years, I would say hogs. I, I think the hog nose popularity gain is going to surpass that of bloods in the next two to three years, if I'm being blunt. So I'm going to go ahead and write um, bloods there, talking about today. Okay, obviously number three then is, is hogs. Uh, and my reasoning there is I just think the size and the cuteness factor is going to really hold them up. Uh, well, they are going to run into some legality issues in some places. Most people are, aren't even going to check the laws before they buy them, and most sellers aren't going to check the laws for the town that person lives in before they sell them. And the truth is, most uh, people who would be checking on that have no idea what the fuck they're looking at anyway. <laughs> so it's probably not going to be a problem too often unless, you know, uh, but it, it could run into that. It becomes more popular, the, uh, then more people will know what they are, and it could be kind of an issue. So I think that's my order. And then course number four would be carpets. My only reason I have carpets at four is, uh, you know, if I was going by what I like, right, if this is what, what does Matt like, uh, rattlesnakes would be one, carpets would be two, uh, blood's probably three, then hogs and corns, right? And so my list from a profitability standpoint is damn near opposite of my list from what I like standpoint. But the reason I have carpets at four is I, I look at them and I see a snake that is very active. Uh, I see a snake that... Uh, sometimes has kind of a scary look to it right for new people they got a pretty wide head on them uh they get longer and bigger so they're, they're the biggest ones on this list from length not from weight the blood pythons are the king of that shit right and i think they can be a little bit just more intimidating because of that i also see i don't see them as frequently as shows um and there's a lot less morphs in general to play with. Corns have a ton of morphs. Bloods seem to come out with some pretty cool stuff and new stuff every day. Hogs have quite a few things out there. Carpets, they're there, but they're a lot harder to find. And they're a lot harder to get new stuff in because of the uh, ban in their natural habitat to bring them in. So to me, that is the order, I think, for profitability. Here's the point I want to make, Okay and why this is all kind of just a fucking crap shoot, and why I tell you to do what you want to do, do what you like. Because am I right, or is Kurt right? Is the data right? The data says blood, carpet, hog, rattlesnake, corn. Kurt says blood, carpet, you're just like the data at first, but then it goes corn, and then hog nose, and rattlesnake five. I've got corn, bloods, hogs, carpets. So, I mean, you can ask anybody, and you're going to get probably a different opinion. So my advice to you, if you want to have a, some, some humble sense, you want to have a side piece, don't get a side piece. It leads to a divorce. If you want to have a little bit of a side breeding, God, that could lead to a divorce too. If you want to work with a different species of snake on the side, that will keep you still uh, not divorced. Then um, you got to pick something that you really like, that you're passionate about and you want to do. Because, I mean, any one of these could be, other than rattlesnakes, <laughs> could be the next big thing. By big thing, I mean number two to ball pythons. And by number two to ball pythons in, in the world of the snake keeping market, I mean, you know, having uh, maybe 15% market share, which is significant. I mean, that sounds like I'm being small on it, but not really. I mean, if you look, I couldn't tell you what the market share for ball pythons is, but it's high. You know, but there's also boas out there that have maintained a pretty good market share, especially for the larger snakes. Boas hurt cor or hurt carpets. They do, because boas are a bigger snake, carpets are a longer snake. People already more established with boas, they tend to stick there, right? Um, you know, so 15% would be rather large. The other thing that's going to come into play for what snakes keep is what laws get passed. You know, and I'm not bagging on the hogs and the venomous thing right now. Um, it, it, it comes down to, as we sit here and we move through the world, if the laws continue to get tighter and tighter and tighter in certain places, especially 
banning things like your larger constrictors, which tend to be the ones that catch the brunt of that, right? And retics go away, okay? And berms go away for 75% of keepers or 80% of keepers. Uh, and anacondas go away for 75 to 80% of keepers. You may be saying, that's not going to happen. I'm telling you, I can see that happening. I'm just being blunt. You know, uh, we're losing... We're losing our fight, guys. We are. So, you know, once we start winning some victories, that's where it's going to be. Uh, then these things are going to start taking over. And that can switch it, right? Because then a guy who wants to have a berm or even a boa constrictor that gets, you know, 10 feet long. And let's we'll say there's a band like there is in our largest city near us at 6 foot. So you can't really have a big female boa there. You know, um... Are they going to want to go, well, I can't have this big boa. I'm going to get me a cute little hoggy. Fuck no, they're not. They're going to probably want to get that blood, right? Or maybe that carpet. Uh, that's going to be where they're going to go. Somebody's just tired of ball pythons. Maybe they do go to that hog, you know, or maybe they do go to that corn. It just kind of really, really depends on what laws happen. So uh, I think the banning of large constrictors could actually pump up the market for things like blood, carpets, and boas even though bowls are on our list, you know, but maybe they don't get banned. Maybe we start winning some battles. Maybe we keep our rights a little bit, or our privileges, or however you want to look at it. I say rights, but whatever. Uh, Kearney, you want to add about this? No. Did any of the data on views, because we just pulled this, any of it surprise you at all? No. You caught, that was just what you thought. Bloods would be number one, and corns would be last? Yeah. You're so full of crap. All right, guys, <laughs> thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.